in the air 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. You just hit that little button. You hit Subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593.33. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of information that he sends out to subscribers each and every day. Come over to TFNN, you want to featured content, and hit that button. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Good hockey. In well, South congratulations. Florida. I know. Uh, listen, man, it's it's a beautiful thing. There's no doubt, it, man. I, I can't believe that both the Lightning and the Bruins are out, but it is what it is, man. That's that's it. and and that Florida played so well when we were up in Toronto, and then yesterday's game, uh, that overtime goal. I don't know if you caught that. I did. I did. Yeah. That the, that passing behind the net there was that not was that great? unbelievable? I know, man. I mean, like. Those guys forechecking and digging that puck out and back and what a great that was a great play. That was, and a lot of people I just think didn't really pay much attention to it, but that was a great play. It was, man. Two right in. <laughs> uh, great. It was a great, great, great games. And what's nice is that uh, Florida's off. Uh, well, and Toronto too, but they don't play their next game until Wednesday. Yes. So it's nice to have, as you know, yep. you're playing that game. It's nice to have an extra 24 hours Huge. worth of uh, recuperation Huge. time. So you know, you mentioned that there was some unusual activity that we saw, you know, maybe an uh, hour ago, half an hour ago. Yes. Or so in the market. So we're actually going to talk about a little bit of uh, unusual activity or some patterns that, that it, it happens, but it doesn't happen often. So the first thing, though, that I thought that we would start with is this is a chart of the S&P 500 for the last 95 years. OK. And this shows this shows the seasonal pattern in a pre-election year. Yeah. So we can see how it goes back. So we have, I believe, there's like 22 or 23 instances of this. And the red vertical line tells us where we're at today. So that red vertical line suggests that we should see a top form by tomorrow. So fairly timely. That's if this pattern is the one that is in play out here. When I take a look at the daily S&P and the ES mini charts, we've got them side by side. Left hand side is the ES mini. You can sort of see these blue diagonal lines. What these are representing are the A to B equals CD pattern. And for me, an A to B equals CD pattern is completed when they get a bullish reversal candle. Well, in each case, they had a three river evening star pattern up at the highs. The S&P cash index also has a wave number seven, just a portion of the uh, Chapman wave tools out here. So we've got sell the D point patterns that are already in place. And what we have is we have prices traded up into resistance. So one of the tools that I share with subscribers is the oscillator and change line. I refer to it as OUL. And here, that can act as a real key level of support or resistance. And so we've seen that the rally, even the rally on Friday, strong rally, but landed and stopped right at that resistance level. So we've got instruments that are up at resistance right now. When I looked at the 60-minute equity future charts, this was maybe about uh, 45 minutes ago or so, um, the NQ the Dow and the Russell 2000. So there's another pattern that I treat that I teach uh, folks a TD nine count pattern. And each of those has a TD nine count top. Now, no levels of support have been broken or no level of support had been broken when I had uh, grabbed this chart out here. When I look at the other. And so what I would hear, we say that the ES mini is supposed to top like tomorrow. It typically what we will see is some kind of intraday topping signal, but I don't have it for the ES mini. I've got it for the other three. And looking at the other intraday charts here, Tom, for the ES mini, so I've got a five hour, a four hour, two hour, there's a 60 minute, the 30, 15, and the 10. What I did have at the time of posting this is any kind of a topping pattern. So nothing was present for the ES mini. When I take a look at market breadth, so market breadth, there's a couple different ways to look at it. One is looking at the advanced decline oscillator not referring to that here. Here, what I'm taking a look at is by use of the TAS market profiles, we can identify whether a market for a specific time frame is uh, market breadth uh, bullish or market breadth bearish. Here, what we have is we have speed dials and we take a look at the S&P 500. It's bearish for its weekly, its daily and its 60 minute time frame. But the four hour time frame, it was still in a bullish setting. So we don't have consistency here, but three of the four are in bearish settings. When I take a look at the spot fix index, it remains below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's this little blue line in the top panel here. Yes. And generally speaking, Tom, that is bullish for the S&P 500. So if I've got people scratching their heads right now, because that, that was, even though it's not a picture of me, that was me after putting together those first several slides, I get it. But let's see it. if, let's see if we, because, you know, like, 
well, you bullish or bearish, Steve. Totally. So, yeah. No, right? no, listen, man. I know. Right? I know. Uh. So let's see if we can clear things up here. So this is the daily chart for the ES Mini. And what I have on here, folks, are their daily and their weekly profiles. Now, with the profile levels represented, the bottom is where buyers are located. At the top is where sellers are located. In the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that range. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn price off because we're really going to understand what these market profiles are signaling to us. So this is the exact same chart we were looking at for the daily time frame for the ES Mini, but without price. Notice how this new profile here, this formed on Friday, Tom. Notice how this new profile wraps around the prior profile. When you start taking a look at all the other ES Mini daily profiles that we've got out here, you don't see this very often. It just doesn't happen that okay. often. And when it does happen, the message is one of consolidation. So we've been in a consolidation. We've been moving sideways here. This is signaling to us that we should expect the consolidation pattern to continue, maybe even more odd moves like what we saw today. Now, we don't stop there. Here we've got the same chart, but what I've thrown on here are the weekly profile levels. Turns out that there is a new profile that is forming this week. So these are the little thin green lines out here. And this profile is with inside the prior profile. This too. So we have both on the daily and the weekly market profile signals that suggest that we are in a consolidation. That's intriguing, take, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So now what people didn't get catch or should or likely didn't catch is where's resistance right for us it's all about support and resistance and we've got a number of different tools that can help us do that here what i'm sharing with folks are the taz market profiles it turns out if you take a look at these red arrows up here okay both the top of the weekly and the top of the daily are at 4206.25 okay. we know where significant resistance is so if these consolidations are going to be broken we will see price close above the 4,206.25 level. So, folks, regardless of the patterns that we have out here, it really is always going to always be about support and resistance. And if you take out one, take out resistance, you should head higher. You look for other, you know, possible levels or, or patterns that might be present. But what we, so we know that 4,206.25 is really key resistance. So we began today with a review of the seasonal charts that suggested that a top should form very soon. However, that top here should really only last for about a week. And then we should continue on with this little sideways move. So perhaps what that means is that price for the ES Mini is going to head down to the bottom of the consolidation, or what I would say would be the range of between 4051, Tom, and 4076. And all I'm using there is I've got the consolidation pattern drawn in, but I'm using the bottom of those profile levels where we have buyers that are hanging out. For the S&P cash index, Tom, that would take us down to about the 40, 48 type uh, level out there. And uh, so I think we're just in a consolidating market. That is at least the message of the TAS market profiles. And folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. Mastering probability, you hit that button, you are off to the races, and you're going to be happy that you did, folks. Steve, you have a great one, safe one, Thanks, and uh, we got some good hockey coming up, man. Unreal. You bet. You Unreal. Bet. Okay, Take man. Care. Have a great you one. Bet. Have a safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.